My name is Bertram Sommer. I am a Norwegian and I'm talking to you from the west coast of Norway. What I want to talk about is a chemical called PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene, otherwise known to most households as Teflon or allied chemicals. What most people don't realise is that PTFE, while very stable under normal condition, breaks down to 15 different chemicals when it gets overheated. You may be interested to know that PTFE is made with fluorine, one of the most dangerous and interactive of all elements. It is really nasty stuff. One of those chemicals is so dangerous it is in section 2 of the chemical weapons register. It is called perfluoroisobutene, P-F-I-B. It can be used to kill you. So, why when we look at frying pans in the shops, as here, do we see a sign saying P-F-O-A free? PFOA is a chemical called perfluorooctooctinate. Nice and complicated name, otherwise known as C8. It is used as a surfacant. It is used to make Teflon, which sticks to, near, to absolutely nothing normally, stick to frying pans. Unfortunately, this surfacant, PFOA, is carcinogenic, mutagenic, and affects the uh, immune system and many other very nasty um, side effects. In America, where PTFE um, is mainly produced, the small town of Parkersburg has had its groundwater seriously polluted. It is interesting to note that the American Maine Cancer Organization states that roughly one in three people will get cancer at some time in their lives. One in three. How many people do you know? PFOA has been replaced by another chemical called Gen X. I've heard other names for it, and it appears from papers produced by DuPont itself that it is just as dangerous as C8. Tests were done on over 900 water samples across the United States. 700 were found to be above the level, the safety level, for PFO exposure. So when you consider all of that, the use of PTFE, I've got Teflon and all the others in the home, is a pretty poisonous issue. The big question is, if this product has been produced since the 1940s, how come this particular um, side effect, that is um, PFIB, the gas that is in section 2 of the chemical weapons register, how come that has not been mentioned? How come that has not been brought out to the public? How come that has not brought about the downfall of the production of Teflon and other cookware, other related cookware? PFIB gas on exposure to water turns to hydrofluoric acid. You can see the results of exposure to that acid here. Well, perhaps the answer lies in this. In the average town of 20,000 people, there are probably as many as 15, 18,000 frying pans coated with cookware. Multiply that by the number of towns throughout the country, and then by the fact that you have to replace them every fourth or fifth year. The amount of money that is exchanged on this just one issue is extraordinary, and it is against recycling, reuse, everything. It should not be happening in modern in the modern day world. Further still, is it possible that the income generated from the production of Teflon and allied products is so high that the states overlook 
the side issues. It is interesting to note that Dan Patrick, the governor of Texas, stated that older people in America should be willing to sacrifice their lives for their for the economy. This, of course, only applies to people of limited income. Let's have a little look at some other products which are in constant use. One of these products is ski wax, PTFE or fluoridated ski wax. This is interesting, so how does it work? But to make the ski wax stick to the skis, they use heat. As a result, many, many ski waxes have become seriously ill. Now, the Norwegian state says that the reason why they are banning it is to stop ground pollution. But <laughs> is it not simply the fact that people are getting ill? Does the state really take the ski wax that comes from the skis seriously enough to consider it bannable from the pollution point of view when you actually, when there actually is extremely little PFOA in ski wax? In fact, the whole PTFE story is bound together by deceit and plain lies. So, to restate the last statement, the Norwegian state and other states have banned ski wax containing PTFE and it looks very much as if it is because people doing the ski waxing have become seriously ill through breathing in the fumes. On the whole, polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE, is a very stable product. It is capable of withstanding heat more than most of the other plastics. But like any plastic, it should never be used where the possibility of extremely high heat is uh, a likelihood. Let's go further still. Should we actually eat it? When you consider that a frying pan needs to be renewed every fifth year or so, is this because the Teflon has begun to be removed from the frying pan, it comes off. Well, if that's the case, then where does it come off? It's, there's only one place, and that's in your food. So, where else are we ingesting Teflon as just as such? And that is in dental floss. There is a wide range of PTFE dental flosses. It is interesting to note that here in Norway we take our health very seriously. And as a result, an article appeared about uh, PTFE dental floss. Questions were asked and uh, the issue forgotten. The company selling the dental floss in Norway has now changed its packaging, so it does not include any mention of PTFE. As Teflon sticks to so very little, it's hardly likely that it's going to stick to the dental floss itself, unless, of course, they use PFOA in large quantities, which, of course, will make it extremely likely that you will die very quickly from some nasty disease associated with it. However, that means that as the PTFE does not stick, it comes off in your mouth, so you are actually eating it. If you try the dental floss, the PTFE dental floss, hold it in your fingers, you'll find it's incredibly slippery. You will also find your fingers are slippery for some time afterwards. The PTEFE is on your finger. Put it in your mouth and you'll get a taste. It's a kind of waxy taste. And that is Teflon that you are eating. Is this good? Well, the simple fact is that with COVID, it has been represented or presented to all of us one very simple fact. That is, if we are to survive as a species, we must take individual responsibility. That is, you and me, 
must act in such a way that we are blameless for the ills of the world, that is, avoiding unnecessary pollution, picking up rubbish, and seeing to issues like this, making sure that we can do something about it. And the first thing you can do is to go through your house and see if there's anything with PTFE or Teflon and throw it out. The second thing you can do is write to your MP or your member of the Senate or whatever. Ask them if this is true. Contact newspapers, ask them if this is true. This film is made in such a way that it can be stopped and the documents are read. If you are computer competent, you should also be able to print them out if you need to. Growing awareness has led to much more information on the internet. Please follow up. I will finish by telling you how I became involved with this issue. In the 90s, I was doing a, a monthly auction in a part of the UK. And one of the auctions was, one of the, many of the lots sold came from the military. One of the lots contained 600 cans of something called IFL. Um, whenever I bought anything, I always wanted to know exactly what it was, what it did. So I took it home. I asked a good friend who turned out to have been a, a chemist at Porton Down, that is the um, UK Military Chemical Weapons Research Institute. And he looked at the can, read the label, and he said, Ah, oh, yes, PTFE. Fascinating stuff. A colleague was doing some glass blowing, and he squirted some PTFE in just to see what would happen. Uh, my other colleague had a myocardial infraction within three minutes. He had a heart attack within three minutes from breathing in fumes from overheated Teflon. Yes, we've, um, if, you, if you go to the Teflon website, it says you can become sick from breathing in the fumes from overheated Teflon. If you actually do some internet research, you may even find an article mentioning several deaths from people who are working in a warehouse where they were grinding up Teflon for reuse and they went out for a smoke. Presumably roll your own or some dust in the cigarettes. I think it was for four or five workers and three of them died or two of them died. I can believe that, especially as I now have a 400 milliliter can of PTFE spray, which is more than enough to kill a large room of people. You knew. Still, you did nothing. How many did you lose? 190. 190 cows. You tell me nothing's wrong here. There are many activists and organisations involved with this issue. As you can see in this film, there are some major Hollywood actors involved also. Mark Ruffalo among them. I have also come across uh, several activist groups in America who find it very hard to believe that PTFE, their beloved Teflon, is in itself so dangerous. Bit by bit, the information is slowly coming out. It is coming out about many other things. It's time we took care of ourselves.